Welcome back IB economics students to this very important video lecture today on economies and diseconomies of scale. So um, I'm going to give a very quick definition economies, uh, economies of scale. What are economies of scale? Um, they are uh, states as a business or industry grows, the average total cost uh, decreases to a certain point. Um, any to a certain point, any additional growth will increase the average total cost. Okay, so uh, let's break this down. The first things first, um, a business or industry refers to internal or external economies of scale, and ATC refers to average total cost. So imagine this picture. Um, there is a uh, there are two people, okay, two two companies, okay, two companies. One company um, uses traditional traditional knitting, right, which is like hand knitting. People use like um, people use a chopstick and and they just knit a scarf. And the other one used um, industrial or uh, mecha uh, mechanical knitting. Okay. Now, which one is going to be more expensive? Okay. Which which one which 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 of the costs of the of, of these two companies is going to be more? Of course, um, industrial mechanical knitting, right? Because um, the machines cost a lot more money, and the operational costs also cost a lot more or a lot more money. However, because industrial uh, or, or mechanical knitting is a lot more productive, a lot more efficient than traditional knitting, the average total cost, uh, average total cost, the average total cost equals um total product divided by cost okay um so so the average total cost would be much lower compared to traditional knitting therefore economies of scale takes in because when when more 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 production is occurring um the average total cost decreases now this could also be seen in a lot of different uh, sectors for example um industrial baking versus traditional baking or mechanical baking, all right. Uh, hand making or hand pan baked breads, of course, is going to be a lot more cheaper to produce. However, the efficiency is a lot less when compared to, to um, industrial baking. Therefore, uh, economies of scale occur. Now, um, there's two types of economies of scale. Okay, I have to define this. is really important. There are two major types of economies of scale. Uh, two types of economies of scale. The first type is internal, uh, internal e economies of scale, and the second one is external economies of scale. Internal economies of scale refers to within a business. Okay, so when a business grows, the average total cost for production for a unit of good decreases, therefore internal economies of scale. External economies of scale refers to when the, ent the entire industry as a whole grows, um, the uh, average total cost decreases. Now, what are some examples of external economies of scale? For example, in telecommunication, right? When the entire telecommunication infrastructure is built, then uh, over the long term, because this, uh, this industry is built more, the average total cost of external economies of scale decreases, therefore leading to uh, economies of scale. On the, on the external level. Now, you might be wondering, why why does the total cost, why does the average total cost, the average t uh, ATC, why does average total cost decrease as a firm or an industry increases in size? Okay, now there's basically four reasons, okay? Um, I'm gonna, I'm gonna label this as fact, factors for uh, economies of scale. Okay, these are what causes economies of scale to occur. This is what causes the average total cost per unit to in to decrease as as the industrial scale or as the scale of production increases. So the first thing is specialization. Now consider an example of a, of a pizza bakery. Within a pizza bakery, there's basically a four main roles. There's the preparation of materials. There is the um, there's the preparation of materials, there's the baking of materials, there's the cashier, and there's also like the cleaning and stuff. Um, if, you, if one person has to be in charge of doing all of these jobs, like he is really not specialized, he is generalized. However, if you hire like, for example, four people to get, um, to, to be in charge of all of these different things, they could be a lot more specialized and therefore a lot more productive in their job. Therefore, specialization is a major factor in contributing to economies of scale. Right. A second major factor in contributing to economies of scale is efficient capital. 
What do I mean by efficient capital? This is a little bit more abstract. For example, when 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 a business is expanding and they want to go to uh to a, a bank to apply for a business loan in order to expand, a business when looking at a small company may give them higher interest rates because they are seen as less are more risky. However, they will give lower interest rates to um, bigger companies. Therefore, economies of scale comes into play and protecting bigger companies and giving the bigger companies a more efficient allocation of, co of capital. Okay. Another uh, major reason or major factor for economies of scale is buying in bulk. Okay. Consider a local bakery. A local bakery um, buys a lot more um, flour and yeast compared to a home bakery, right? When, when if, if, if your grandma or, or whoever normally bakes at home, they would know they usually go to, to um, the supermarkets to buy a flour in like a one pound, two pound bags, maybe for really extreme bakers, maybe one kilogram bags. However, for industrial bakers, they buy they buy a flour in the bulk. They buy flour in in, 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 in the box loads, perhaps in the truck loads. Therefore, when 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 a resources, when, when raw materials are buy, bought in the bulk, they are a lot cheaper and therefore the production cost decreases a lot more. Okay, and uh, production and speed, pro production speed, or, or or some people call it um production speed or efficiency. Efficiency also uh, is another major factor in economies of scale. Uh, for example, machines are a lot more efficient than people are in most cases. That's why a machine, uh, uh, a machine uh, infrastructure, a machine production is a lot cheaper. Therefore, economies of scale also occur. Now, how do we graph economies of scale on a uh, uh, on, on an axis form? Okay, so um, it's really important to take note that economies of scale take uh, take form in the long run. The definition of a long run is when all variable factors of production can be changed. So that is the definition of, of the long run production, and because uh, short run production is when at least uh, one one uh, factors of production is fixed. However, in, in the long run, all factors of production are variable. So uh, on the on the uh, y axis, I want to say long run average cost. So long long run average cost. So this is on the x uh, on the y axis. Uh, I'm gonna title this um, economies. And this e economies of scale. So, um, if you're asked to graph economies and this economies of scale, you could just give this um this this diagram. And on the x axis, I'm gonna label this as output. Okay, this is output. So, uh, considering this, when 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 looking at uh economies of scale, the first thing we we, we would see is that the, the the total cost decreases because of economies of scale, because of specializations, uh, efficiency, and, and capital usage buying in bulk. However, after a while, it starts to plateau off. Now, why is that? It's because economies of scale do not keep going on. The total fixed cost, um, the, 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 the average total cost does not just keep keep going and, 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 and reaching zero as, as you make more and more of it. Of course, it will get closer to zero, but it will never reach zero. Um, but however, after a long time, you will, you will start to go into what we call this economies of scale, or what also some people call... Um, decreasing returns in economies of scale. Now, what what does that mean? So this is this basically what the the curve is supposed to look like. Okay, it's 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 a U shaped. It's U shaped. So it goes down. So there's basically three phases. This this first phase. Okay. Um, that of which is highlighted in in green. This first phase shows what we call uh, increasing economies or increasing or returns to scale, okay? This is when economies of scale are occurring. This line right here, um, this section right here, where, um, where the long run, uh, long run average cost is plateaued, this, this section right here is what we call uh, constant returns to scale. Okay, this is what we call constant returns to scale, and it is highlighted in the blue box. And, and what we have in the last section right here is what we call diseconomies of scale, or what we call decreasing economies of scale, that of which is reached um, um, because maximum uh, output is reached, and, and, and adding more um, uh, economies of scale does not make it better. Um, this is what we call um, um, diseconomies of 
scale. This is what we call this economies of scale, that of which is reached when um so so what are some examples of when this economies of scale occurs? For example, in in, in in a factory, just by hiring more and more workers does not mean it will be more and more productive and more and more efficient. Hiring more and more workers will be efficient and productive to a certain extent. However, uh, by by hiring infinite amounts of workers, your production quantity is not going to increase infinitely. So I hope this video is it's helpful in, in, in explaining economies of scale as well as these economies of scale and illustrating the uh, factors for economies of scale and illustrating in graphic form the long run average cost uh, on in relation to the output as well as um, two types of economies of scale and a definition of it. So I hope this video is helpful and I hope to see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.